Good morning, Maddie. Nice to see you again. How are you feeling today? Hello, Renee. I'm okay. Getting close to the finish line now. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. Okay, so yes, of course. That's normal, especially considering you're at 37 weeks gestation today. Yeah, that makes sense. It's all come along so quickly. You've done amazingly so far. Today I thought we would discuss and clarify your birth plan. How does that sound? I was actually going to bring that up with you today. I've been doing my research regarding water births and I think I want to give it a go. What do you think? Wow, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to inform you of the water birth option and give you a rundown as to what it is and how it works, especially considering your pregnancy is at a low risk. Great, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, perfect. Before we get started, are there any major concerns or questions that you may have regarding water births? Just so I can ensure that I've covered everything that you need and want to here before you leave today's appointment. Uh, yes, actually. The one thing that I cannot understand that absolutely terrifies me every time I think about it. How will my baby not drown once it's born in the water? How did I know you were going to ask that question, Maddie? That's probably the most commonly asked question in terms of water births. Okay, so, we need to remember that at this very moment, as well for the past 37 weeks, baby has been living in a sack, a sack of fluid. This essentially means that they are used to the water. Oh, yes, of course. Well, as you probably have discovered, babies are quite extraordinary human beings. To prevent any drowning once your baby's head is born, the baby adopts a diving reflex movement and that automatically inhibits the bottom part of its pharynx. Oh wow, so it definitely won't drown or swallow any water? All babies have many senses. For example, your baby's taste buds and nerve endings will function, particularly in order to prevent any fluid entering the pharynx and being swallowed. Now we can't guarantee anything or come to any conclusions until we experience your birth. It is quite rare for babies to drown. I guess with every birth comes some sort of risk. Yeah, we just can't confirm anything with you at this very moment. We hope that everything runs smoothly, which I believe it will, considering your pregnancy journey as far. Okay, perfect. Let's lock it in. I'm excited now. If you feel anything abnormal, make sure you call our birthing unit. Otherwise, we shall see you in the water bath when baby is ready. Thank you so much for your help, Renee. All the best, Maddie. I am just a little concerned about the pain of labour and giving birth. That's understandable. One of the main benefits of having a water birth is that it can reduce pain without any pharmacological invention. Does that mean that it will completely take away the pain? Not necessarily, but it will help with the contractions and soften the perineum during your labour, which therefore can reduce the incidence and severity of tearing. Oh, awesome. Are there any other benefits of having a water birth? Yes, there is. Water immersion allows for movability because of the buoyancy of the water. The advantage to buoyancy is the promotion of uterine contractions which provides greater oxygenation for the baby and further reduces the amount of pain. Being able to move around easily also helps open the pelvis, allowing your baby to descend easier. The freedom to move sounds like a great benefit. Yeah, using a birth pool can provide a sense of privacy which aids in reducing stress-related hormones such as noradrenaline and catecholamines, which normally would raise blood pressure and, and inhibit or slow labour. Being able to remain calm allows the body to produce pain-inhibiting endorphins, such as oxytocin, which results in effective contractions and a shorter labour. Another benefit from being in the pool is the necessary involvement of your support people. Hospital guidelines state that once you're in the water, you can't be left alone, so there will always be someone with you at all times. Wow, that all sounds great. Are there any benefits for my baby? The water provides an environment similar to the amniotic sac due to the similar temperatures, which eases the stress of birth, which can create a sense of security and reassures your baby. This all sounds great. I really would love to have a water birth. I feel like my labor will be a lot more stress-free and comfortable using water. So do lots of women have water births? At the moment, we can assume around 10% of women choose to use water whether just to relieve pain or totally birth. However, this number is rising, probably because of the high satisfaction rates. What makes them higher than birthing without using water? 
Many women choose to use water as a way of having a birth without the use of drugs or instruments. We know these types of births have lower undesirable outcomes and result in better health for both mum and baby. Water is a great natural relief of pain because of the way it makes you feel weightless. It takes some of the pressure off your back and other muscles. Women who have successful water births report they are quick, natural and empowering. Apart from pain relief, why else would anyone choose it? It can offer a bit of privacy, which to some women is really important. It can create a more relaxing environment, and the more relaxed we are, the quicker the labour and the better the birth. Let's watch a video. You just do what you've been doing, that's brilliant. Brilliant, lovely, keep that coming, just nice and gently, keep going, you're doing great, you can keep pushing, you're fine, lovely, 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 well done, well done, good, good, that's it, gentle little pushes, keep going, that's it, good, good, breathe, breathe, lovely, that's baby's head out, well done, and wait for the next contraction, and then a big old push for me. So head out at quarter two. Lovely. Oh, she's cute. Really cute. Okay, my darling, get ready to take your baby. That contraction. Good, Andrea. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Good, keep going, keep going, keep going. Go on, big push. Good. Alright, go push, push, push. Sometimes the doctors find it annoying to get wet though, I wouldn't want to make it hard for anyone. Quite the opposite. We want you to have the birth that you want, so whatever you want is exactly what we want. Besides, over 95% of doctors and midwives support and recommend water in labour and or birth. What about once the baby is born? Can I hold my baby? How do women feel? Water birth enables to pick your baby up if you'd like. You can be the very first person to hold your baby. Research also shows that 84% of women who use water immersion will do so for subsequent pregnancies. So we can only assume you'll be feeling great. Wow, that sounds great. It does sound like there's more sense of freedom plus better health outcomes for both me and my baby. Um, but just to have an idea of both sides of the coin, is there any downside of having water immersion? Actually, water immersion may have some potential risks. They're quite minor, but I will go through them because it's your birth plan and you have the right to know about it. So, what are the risks of using water during my labour and birth? Good question. Water birth does not increase the risk of any labour complications. However, there are some rare risks for the baby. These include neonatal drowning, neonatal waterborne infections, hyponatremia, respiratory tract issues, and cord avulsion. There is no increased risk of newborn death with the water birth compared to a birth on land. What about risks for the mother? There is no difference in maternal risk when using water compared to birthing on land. However, you will be advised to leave the bath following the birth as there is no evidence around the safety to delivering placenta. Is there any reason I wouldn't be able to have a water birth? Yes, there is. According to state guidelines, in order to have a water birth, you must have a non-complicated pregnancy of one baby that is head down and be at least 37 weeks pregnant. If you have or develop any of the following complications, however, you will not be able to use water during your labour and birth. These include previous obstetric complications, such as a significant postpartum hemorrhage, caesarean section, or shoulder dystocia, or medical complications, such as preeclampsia, interuterine growth restriction, high maternal BMI, or risk factors for shoulder dystocia. There are some labour complications that would require you to leave the bath. These include meconium stained lycor, maternal temperature greater than 37.5 degrees, fetal heart rate abnormalities, or an intrapartum hemorrhage. 
Will I need to leave the bath for examination? We still need to monitor your baby's heart rate and document your labour progress. However, this can be done while you remain in the bath using a handheld Doppler or CTG telemetry. Will I have access to pain relief in the bath? Water immersion will help the pain of labour, but you will also have access to nitrous oxide gas. Other stronger painkillers cannot be used. What if my labour is induced? Can I still use water? Yes, provided CTG telemetry is available, you will be able to use water even if your labour is induced. Just as a recap, there are two ways you can use water immersion. As pain relief in the first stage of labour and to actually have a water birth. Alright then, when can I actually get in? Whenever you feel like, we recommend that you enter the pool in established labour so when you feel strong, regular contractions. Then for home water immersion, is there specific equipment I need other than a bath? A pump or a hose to refill water. But we don't recommend pools with filtration systems for reheating and refilling because of the risk of Legionnaire's disease. Okay then, what temperature do I have to maintain the water at? Between 34 to 37 degrees Celsius, or as cool as you feel comfortable in. If the temperature gets above 38 degrees, you might be overheated, meaning your baby will be too. This can lead to potential hypoxia. Alright, that sounds pretty serious. Then how about from the point I enter the pool? Is there any position I need to sustain? Once you've entered the pool, you can try different positions and seek out the most comfy one. Here's the options. You can try squat, holding onto the sides, or kneeling with your arms around your partner's neck. You might try resting on the side with inflatable pillow, or on the other side of the pool. Wow, there's a lot of options I can choose from. Since you mentioned my partner, what are some things he can do when I'm in the bath? He can join you in the bath physically and support you. Otherwise, he can massage your lower back and shoulders, which can be relaxing for you. He can help you with nourishment like drinks and will definitely be providing an emotional encouragement for you. It's great that he can also be involved in my birth. And just from talking about water immersion, it gets me quite interested about water birth. Could you describe to me how water birth would be like? If you decide to stay in the pool for second stage as well, you may do so. When you feel sustained urge to push, you can push. I'll be verbally guiding you. At the birth of your baby, she would be completely submerged and brought gently to the surface without delay. Her head should be down to let secretions to drain from her mouth, then skin to skin with you. Would the condition of the bath remain the same as during labour? At birth, the water temperature will have to be increased around 37 to 37.5. It prevents your baby detecting any environmental changes. Then how about the placenta? It is up to you how you decide whether to stay in the bath or exit during surge stage. There is currently not enough evidence suggesting the birth of the placenta underwater is safe, but neither that is dangerous. But I do promote the physiological third stage, which I will be a hands-off process, and your placenta will be expelled. That sounds amazing. Thanks for the recommendation. After hearing all these great things about water immersion, I'd like to have a go. I look forward to having a nice water birth now. Thank you for your help, Renee. No problem. I will see you for your next follow-up visit.